All right. Um, I want to go over a couple things. I think there's a, I think there's a couple of big unlocks here, that I want to make explicit. Even if it's already obvious to some, it may help others. So, it's something that uh, I just want to go over here. Okay. So what we want to do is set up TLS, also known as SSL. Um, on a server, and this can work for any website. It's free the, uh, uh, with Let's Encrypt. But we'll also do it a actually much better way. But let's do it the Let's Encrypt way, just so we have that logged down, so we know how to do it in case we need it. And then let's do the better way, which is Caddy Server. Okay. Um, alrighty. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna map a a, a, a a DNS. We're gonna map a domain name, a subdomain really, to a, a virtual machine's IP address, and then we ha so we'll have an access. We'll have an entry point into the um, into the virtual machine that we create, oh. and then we'll lay down the the file system for Let's Encrypt. Okay, it'll, it'll produce the a certificate and a key file for us to do TLS stuff. And then we'll run Portainer in Docker. And it'll map it'll map a volume to the file system created by Let's Encrypt on the server. And then it'll just serve TLS, HTTPS. We'll do it that way. And then we can just reuse the DNS to get to get here, but we, we don't really, we don't need the DNS for the certificate because we won't use a certificate the second way, but we'll just use it for convenience to access the, the, um, the IP address the, to the VM. We'll keep the same VM. We'll just get, we'll get rid of the portainer this instance. We don't need it. Let's, let's encrypt. We can just leave it there. We're not going to use it though. And we're not going to map any files the next time. What we're going to do instead is we're going to install Caddy Server with a configuration. If you if you're familiar with Nginx, it's very similar except it's better. Um, so we're going to do Caddy Server, which is Caddy Caddy Server to Nginx is like um, it's like the uh, similar to how Vite is to Webpack, like. Vite comes pre-installed, it's like already ready to go. That's what Caddy Server is like, whereas Webpack gives you everything by hand. Okay, so we'll do Caddy Server. It will reverse proxy or sit in front of the request and pass along to Portainer, and then we'll have TLS through that that mechanism. So we'll have two servers running, but we don't have to set up any uh, certificates or anything, or map any domain or, or anything like that. But we'll we'll see how the, how that works. Okay. So I think the best, the best way, I have messed around a lot with um, jumping into file systems by using remotes and stuff like that and VS Code. And yes, it does work, but it either, it either works really well or it doesn't at all. So um, instead of like being frustrated by that, what I'm doing is just keeping an updated, um, Keeping an updated, uh, every, just install, doing everything I need on my local and uh, updating it in Git. All right, so I need to make any changes, I just update it in Git and then I pull it down into, um, I pull it down from Git onto the machine and then just run it on the machine. Okay, that's the easiest way. So now we can do. Let's start. Okay, let's first things first. Let's go and uh, cr let's create the VM. So we can do it in AWS, GCP, or Azure. Azure is uh, challenging. I didn't like it. It looked just way too expensive, and it was not just didn't seem right. AWS is great. It gives you. Um, it's probably it's probably the best. But um, although we can we're gonna do we could do the exact same steps on AWS but we're gonna do it on GCP because GCP um, has an all has a forever free tier so this will where AWS will cost me five bucks a month which is not a lot but GCP will actually cost me zero dollars a month to do so 
um, or we're going to do GCP. And the way we do that is we go ahead and say create instance. And the kind you need is going to be EC2 micro. No. Yeah, OK. So for AWS, it's T2 micro. For GCP, it's E2 micro. OK, very similar. So it's got to be, uh, I like that's close to me, US East 1. But that's one of the regions where it has to be. I'm going to say retainer GCP E2 micro. OK? And you can have up to 30 gigs on it. It doesn't, it'll only ask for 10, 10, and da, 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 da. We don't want Debian. We want Ubuntu. We want Ubuntu. And, um, yeah, we want Ubuntu and 30 gigs. Let's actually go for Jammy 2286. So 22 is the latest, latest and greatest, and we want x86, and jammy is the image. Okay, so we'll select that. Okay, so that US East one E2 micro, that's the free one. It's a uh, and my config is 30 gigs. We get up to that for free, and 22. There we go. Okay, and we want to allow HTTPS and HTTP. We're not going to do any weird stuff like config, like a shell from my local machine to the remote. I just don't want to mess with that. So we're just going to say default access. I don't need any other APIs, anything like that. We're just going to do that. Okay. All right. There we go. We'll create that. It'll be real quick. And then we'll just jump right into it. Um, while we, well, no, we don't have anything else. So let's just look at this. But yeah, I guess I'll just show you this. Okay. Um, I had one for AWS. This I don't really need. Um, okay. Yeah. Like that. Okay. All right. So the external IP, we'll map that to here. It's an A record, I'm calling it Portainer GCP. And in fact, just to switch it up, I'll, we'll just call it Portainer because we, I don't have an a, AWS version. And that's the, uh, it's an ephemeral address. AWS gives you a permanent one. GCP gives you an ephemeral one. So you had to come here and change it every so often, but um, you know, it's free, so I guess it's fine. So we're gonna call it Portainer. And we're gonna change that in here. Well, I don't want to be jumping around too much because it's going to confuse you. Um, okay, so Portainer. Okay, that's it. All right, so now we're going to get into this bad boy. This, um, not, oops, not this cloud shell. This cloud shell is for managing like different instances, so you don't actually want that. What you want is this SSH in here. Okay, so we're going to get in there. So this is raw codes. Um, it, it's his uh, it's his uh, tutorial, but I'm just adding the the preliminary parts. So yeah, okay. So we want to say um, uh, yeah, pseudo. One thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna change everything that says Portainer GCP to just Portainer. Okay. And that doesn't need to change at all. This yeah, I think that's the only place.
host name is going to be the same thing we're calling it here. snap installed we're gonna do um, we're gonna we're gonna install um, first we use snap to install um, the core stuff whatever and now we're using it to install certbot classic we'll have to say sudo okay and then once we get classic certbot installed we're gonna we're gonna make a lot um, a uh, we're gonna make a um, a, um, a link a symbolic link to basically put this on the path because it'll it'll install everything in a snap directory but you want to link it to user bin that's where your path's at so you can run certbot um, from anywhere. All right, so certbot cert only. So we're gonna say now we're gonna run, we're gonna run this the let's encrypt certbot um, web server, which is going to create a file system after we go ahead and uh, um, after we fill out this information. So we'll just say yes, yes, and then. Um, Container dot grow nifty dot xyz. So that is going to be the domain that I'm going to get the SSL for the TLS for. And we can create it. And now what we want to do is uh, now we have a file system. Okay. So it's an Etsy Let's Encrypt Live. And then the domain. And then you have the certificate and the private key. That's what I'll use to pass back, back and forth. Messages between the browser and itself, the server. Uh, okay, that's what the server will use. And now what we wanna do is just run the, actually, you know, we're gonna need to do this anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh, to need this command. What we're going to do is we're going to run Docker. The um, name of the container is going to be Portainer. The image is going to be Portainer slash Portainer dash CE colon latest. And we're going to map the volumes. First, the uh, var run Docker to sock. So the, the Docker socket. The socket is just a file that um, that an operating system reads from and writes to as it's sending and receiving messages um, to and from the outside world. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so so the socket, the Docker socket is the Docker container talking to the host and uh, Portainer data. Okay, that's inside Portainer. And these right here are the um, read-only copies of the encryption the encryption uh, certificate and key file. And that's what Portainer needs in order to serve to the browser with TLS. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just run this with a sudo command. Oh yeah, we need to install Docker. So we'll say snap install Docker. Sudo snap install router. Okay. It goes pretty quick, and then we'll just run that. 
Docker command again. Okay, and when that's ready, we should be able to just go to Portainer. Not Portainer GCP, but Portainer. And it should work. an hour again. Oh. Oh, I don't think it's running right now. Yeah, it's restarting. What happened? Pseudo. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay, so Docker run four forty three and eighty. So now we'll just create uh, create the user and there we go. We'll go to settings and we'll want to just go down here and say force HTTPS apply changes. So that was the first way. Now what we want to do is actually let's stop portainer. Let's remove portainer. Okay. And now, like I said, we were going to. So we, what we did was we set the VPC. You know, it's available here. Let's encrypt. Created a file system for us to map to with portainer that we run as a Docker. Map the volume. Okay, and then our DNS mapped the um, IP address, and then Less Encrypt referred to the domain that we that we used to map to the IP address. Okay, so that's all working together. Now this is going to uncouple the DNS and the file system, and just going to let you run um, Portainer in isolation and a Caddy server in front of it, and that's it. So this is this is going to be better. Okay, this is this is more tangled up, and has more dependencies. This is more modular and uh, flexible and just better. Okay, so it, let's so now we just need to install this caddy server. So in order to do that, in order to do that, we need a caddy file, which is very similar to the engine nginx um, conf. And now this is really where raw code um, is his expertise. On David Flanagan has expertise really shines through on this because I've never done this before this is the first time and it worked perfectly the first time so it's just very very nice but it's very similar to nginx so you say your email you say the word email and then whatever it is and then here's your domain so whatever your domain is whatever you, you know, I mean you don't need the DNS system for this to work but if you want to go to it visiting this and doing it like that then that's what it will be well, actually, no, you know what? I lied. I lied. Um, we will, we will need the DNS 
here because um, the, the caddy server caddy file maps DNS name to uh, D to DNS name to the to the request. So um, yeah, so it'll it it's looking for this domain and it will map calls to this domain onto which will come so it'll this domain will come into the, the virtual machine and calls to this virtual machine that are that are hitting this domain will then be reverse proxied onto portainer at 9443 where it's running okay so this caddy file is is the this is the magic here, just like the nginx conf file. Okay, so let's just make sure we have that ls. We have that. It's a cat the caddy file. Once we can got. Oh, it says your email. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to. Um, I am going to stage all my changes here. That and push. I'm going to push all of this. Okay. Now let's go ahead and say get pull. Production. Caddy file. Mm, goodness, why is this not happening? It's not updating. All right, I'm using um, I'm using Git Tower, trying because it's a little bit more um, it's a little bit more uh, explicit there. Okay, so cat the uh, okay. Oh, anyways, uh, cat the caddy file. Okay, so now we have the correct stuff here. So if I say ls. It's in my, um, okay, there we go. All right, so now we have the, we have the good config for the caddy file. So what we'll do is we will run the, uh, run the command to run Docker without the, um, the mapping to, because we don't, we don't need the file, so we don't need the cert file system. I'll just run it on its natural ports, 943 and 8000. 8, and then we'll run the caddy server in front of it. Okay. So let's say um, sudo 
Microsoft or a PS to see what's running. Let's see if I can, can I increase that a little bit? Okay. And then we'll just say uh, sudo, sudo error. Okay, so for this one, this is also really um, raw codes. Uh, he he helped out with this here. I mean, this uh, this is all his stuff, but yeah. Okay, so what we're doing is we're gonna run, and I need to say sudo in front of it too. I don't know how to jump to the front. Okay. Sudo sudo docker run. Okay, on 4.43 and 80, and this, it would probably work without this link, Portainer Portainer, uh, but uh, anyways, the volume we do need to map is PWD, print working directory, meaning the current working directory, caddy file, and that'll go to Etsy, caddy, caddy file, and then um, this is like a named volume, caddy data to data, and another one, caddy config to config. Um, and then Alpine. So really what this caddy, the, the caddy file is the real item. Um, this other stuff, it probably would work without it, but definitely you need that. Okay, so we'll run that, sudo. Okay. And um, I should have just tested if it was working without Is working now. Uh, oh, this is just go ahead and log back in. And settings, is it still? Yeah, so it's ELS, okay. Um, okay, so as you can see, it still works with Caddy in front of it without mapping to the, to the file system. Um, it's SSL, so I think it's you. Even though I brought down and killed the other container, um, there's still it's still remembered. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much it. Um, you you might try in your own time if you can do it without without this link. And without any of these uh, other volumes, and you know, just this, just kind of minimize it down. Um, but yeah, that should be good to get you, good to get you going.